Hey there people, how's it going? This is Cross the Rubicon channel. I put a post on yesterday on YouTube on my community page and it was about this uh, Pacific Island lady, half Pacific Island lady, uh, who's a poet here in New Zealand. And uh, Tusiata Abia is her name. And her poetry, most of her poetry, and her worldview is anti-Western, anti-British, anti-white. And she really is a, well, a grade one racist. And Stuff News, which is our premier source of news in New Zealand, Stuff News, is promoting her. And she's won loads of awards for poetry. Her poetry is pretty shit. If, if it wasn't her, if it was someone Caucasian or European, white European, writing her poetry, it would be shit. But because she's, well, you know. She gets lots of awards. And her poetry is venom and vitriol against white colonial colonialism. And yeah, she's from Samoa, not New Zealand. But there you go. It just stinks. It stinks that this was in the news and celebrated and promoted this anti-white European hatred. And it is. I'll leave a link below. You can check it out yourself. Another story is Klaus Schwab just the other day at a summit somewhere in Saudi Arabia where he gives, he gives a speech and talks about nations or leaders of nations falling, into, falling in line with the WEF or else, well, fall behind. They have to catch up with what the WEF, WEF Klaus Schwab, is about to do, what he calls Black Swan events what are black swan events it was very vague but i'm thinking i'm guessing surmising that black swan events are creating catastrophes creating catastrophes to pull nations into line now we've got I, i'm not really sure about the earthquakes i'll be honest with you in turkey if they're just earthquakes or what. Listen, I, I don't go down that road. I, I just don't believe governments have got the power to cause that kind of thing. But anyway, but if they do, and they and a, a global hegemon kind of government, like the United States, if you like, or China, had the power to cause an earthquake in a small, much smaller nation to punish them for something, that is an act of war. And whoever makes that decision, well, we know what the punishment should be. But we've got in New Zealand here, up the, up the North North Island, on the, uh, the Eastern Cape, Hawke's Bay, we've had terrible rains, terrible floods. And many people have said to me about cloud seeding and the governments, especially the United States governments, having the ability to create rain and storms now i've not believed this for years but now these past few weeks i'm thinking because of things i've seen things i've read i'm thinking i think they have got the ability and they are causing catastrophes especially floods and storms and you know high winds and all that damage damage to property and all that bridges and whatever people getting killed <sighs> to drive this climate change narrative and to basically keep us concealed in our own towns and cities i.e 15 minute cities who knows who knows if they're doing this who, who knows if that's their aim and if they are then this comes out of klaus schwab's wef and if he's behind this, and Bill Gates is somehow behind this as well, and George Soros, and all these world leaders who have fallen into line with this maniac, what can the world do against them? What can the world do? If this man really is, Klaus Schwab, ruling the world with an iron fist, and all our leaders of nations our so-called elected leaders, when they're really selected, Joe Biden, Rishi Sunak, 
Jacinda Ardern, now gone. Then we're in deep trouble, aren't we? We're in deep trouble because these people have got an iron grip on the militaries of their own nations. So basically, Klaus Schwab has got the militaries of the world on his side. More and more people are waking up to what's happening. But because they've got the media all over the world sewn up. I mean, look at that, what I just told you earlier about this. This Samoan lady, a part Samoan lady. So full of hate and vitriol. And yet that is celebrated. That wouldn't normally be celebrated in a normal free society. This is inverted. Racism is celebrated, but only when it's against white Europeans or Americans or Canadians, Australians, New Zealanders. It's celebrated. And yet, if anybody said what she said, and they weren't Samoan or brown, and said it about brown or black people, their lives would be ruined. So it's inverted. It's not fair. It's not level playing field. If we're not allowed to say it about them, then they shouldn't be allowed to say it about us. Surely that is right, isn't it? <sighs> but this is the world we live in. In New Zealand, we've lost our freedom of speech. Completely lost it. People are being, people's lives are being destroyed for telling the truth. The truth is now lies, and lies is the truth. Insane people, insane, I mean literally insane people, are in charge of government organisations to hunt for, to literally hunt for, what they believe are people they like to call far-right, um, dangerous extremists. And then people are just normal people who disagree with what this government is doing in this country. And these people are being promoted into very high places of government quangos, being paid big money, and yet these people are lunatics. Lunatics. The disinformation project the people that are in charge of that in New Zealand, they're maniacs, absolute maniacs. You listen to them talk. They are they're bonkers, absolutely bonkers. Everyone is a far-right white supremacist just because they disagree with them. It's insane. And yet none of these people will come on any show and explain themselves because they say they believe their lives are under threat by far-right white supremacists. New Zealand has not got a far-right white supremacist problem. And apparently, I'm, myself, is considered to be, according to this book that came out last Wednesday, written by one of these lunatics I'm talking about, written by him, who's a proud communist, a really proud communist. I'm one of New Zealand's premier far-right white supremacists. Would you believe that? I was a prison officer for 11 years here in Christchurch. And I've seen these real white supremacists with their skinheads and their swastika tattoos. I haven't got a tattoo on my body. Swash the tattoos all over their bodies. Real dangerous men, real dangerous men, who are in jail for murder. And yet, the media aren't talking about them. They're not talking about them. They're not pointing the finger at these people. Some of them are out, out of jail now. But no, they talk about people like myself, and others I won't mention, who just say things that are true against co-governance, against Maori extremism in New Zealand, elite extremism, iwi greed, fake treaty, which this 
this country is being run and dictated to by a treaty that's actually fake. It's a fake treaty. So if you say that, that means you're a far-right white supremacist. That's the insanity of where we are here. Everything's inverted. Everything. Common sense is a dirty word here. You have to fall into line with the narrative, and the narrative is far leftist and globalist. And you have to do what the government tell you to do, or else the media and these lunatics of the disinformation project will come hunting for you, and they will destroy your life. <laughs> On another note, <coughs> the book that came out on Wednesday, last Wednesday, I'm not going to name the book. Many of you will know what it is. The man who wrote that book has basically censored me and I had three police, uh, three police visits over quite a few weeks to serve me saying that I must remove all comments about him on my social media about this bloke who wrote the book the author, or else face a $5,000 fine or six months in prison. And yet, as I learned just the other day, as people sent me <sighs> photo shots of pages of that book, where my name is all over it, and yet, with this, what is it, harmful Digital Communications Act, I am completely censored by even mentioning his name or else I get a 5k fine or six months in jail. Do you think that's fair? And yet he's written a book and slandered me again here in New Zealand. I'm slandered again. Not only is my life ruined for the last nearly two years, and you know the story about that, but this bloke wants absolute destruction. And the media have been promoting his book for weeks. Building up to the sale, to the day of sale. Or the launch, should I say, which was last Wednesday. They've been building it up. Free advertising for him. And my name's all over it. As New Zealand's most dangerous, in a way, if you like. One of New Zealand's most dangerous. That's not true. It's completely not true. It's fake. It's being built up to something it's absolutely not. What do you think it does to my life? What do you think it does to me? It's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. But that's New Zealand. That's where we are now. Anyway, I'll leave you a link to the Half Samoan Ladies Vitriol and Venom. You can read it yourself below. And have a look at Klaus Fabs. If I can find it, I'll leave a link to that too. Where he talks about black swan events. This man is causing catastrophe around the world to make governments fall into line and people to fall into line to his worldview. This man and his cohorts are multi-billionaire psychopaths who literally run the world and own everything. They even own the media. They're that rich. And to speak out against, speak out against them, like I do, and many of us do, they come after us. And no doubt they will. No. They can do anything they want to us. And create any story they like and people will believe it so more people have to wake up to what these people are doing Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, George Soros and the world leaders so called world leaders that they've selected to lead nations like Canada, Justin Trudeau Macron of France, Rishi Sunak and everybody before him including Boris Johnson Jacinda Ardern and this pipsqueak that's in power now here in New Zealand everywhere Joe Biden as well 
they put him in power by well we know what happened there these people run the world and they uh, well I believe they're being rumbled more and more people are waking up to it and now they're desperate they're desperate now because they just could have overplayed their hand and hopefully Maybe next year, the end of next year, 2024, depending on who wins the US election, unless it's fixed again. Maybe these people, hopefully, just, I hope and pray, they are all, all rounded up, brought down and put on trial for crimes against humanity. Okay, that's my video. I wasn't expecting to be that long, but... This is across the Rubicon channel. Please like, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, share this video everywhere because, as you know, I'm being shadow banned by YouTube, probably on orders from the New Zealand government. Um, I need you to share my videos everywhere. Okay, see you later.